Mars is a dry, frozen world today. But colonists from Earth will someday be looking for ways to make it more like home. The first and most important step in making Mars habitable is to warm it up. The fundamental problem with Mars today is it's too cold. We'll have to warm Mars from its average of 80 below zero to about 25 below to get terraforming started in the warmest regions near the equator. And it would take something pretty dramatic to generate that kind of heat. One person who has pondered the problem is Robert Zubrin, an aerospace engineer, author, an ardent proponent of colonizing and terraforming Mars. Initially, I thought about a wide array of techniques, some of which involved uh, significant uh, violence. He considered hydrogen bombs to melt ice and heat up the atmosphere, or corralling space rocks from the asteroid belt and crashing them into Mars. But he's had second thoughts about that. I've come to realize that while some of them might be workable in principle, that none of them um, are really workable in practice. Zubrin's long-range vision of Mars involves people, permanent colonists calling the planet home. And they'd want to survive the process of warming it up. The people who are actually going to terraform Mars are going to be the people who live on Mars. Okay, they are the only ones who will have a significant enough stake in the outcome of terraforming Mars to want to expend the resources that would be required to change a planet. So they're not going to want to do things like exploding hydrogen bombs on the South Pole. In fact, there is an easier way. And we've been practicing it on Earth for the past 150 years. We know how to warm up planets. We're demonstrating that we know how to do that right here on Earth, where it's probably not a good idea. By burning fossil fuels, the carbon remains of ancient plants, we're pumping out carbon dioxide faster than the Earth can take it back in. In the process, we're increasing the ability of our atmosphere to trap heat from the sun. And we're seeing the kinds of results that terraformers would like to see on Mars. Warming up planets is something we know how to do. We would do exactly on Mars what we're doing on Earth. We're going to have to set up literally little factories on Mars whose intent is to produce greenhouse gases. It would be prohibitively expensive to bring fossil fuel from Earth. And even if it weren't, it would take thousands of years to produce enough CO2 to make a difference. But there are more potent greenhouse gases that could be made from materials already on the planet. At Caltech, Margarita Marinova has been studying them, exposing them to infrared light to see how efficiently they capture heat. Some of them just let that energy pass straight through them, but some of these gas actually absorb the energy. The most potent, containing sulfur and fluorine, have a super greenhouse effect, thousands of times greater than carbon dioxide. So they really put a lot of punch in for a very small amount of the gas. Fluorine and sulfur are both contained in the Mars soil. So you might imagine these factories pulling in Mars air, scooping up Mars dirt, going through a chemical process, producing these super greenhouse gases, and releasing them into the atmosphere. In a sense, the hardest part of this whole story of warming Mars and introducing life is that first step, that first step of producing the super greenhouse gases on a planet with no infrastructure, no facilities, nothing. Everything's got to be built from scratch. Mm -hmm. 